Amen. Our God is worthy of our praise. All of it. All of it. I cannot wait until every nation, tribe, and tongue Amen. recognizes, I mean, recognizes, no illusions, that Jesus is Lord. Oh, man. It's coming, and it is coming quickly. Hey, I wanted to share a quick story with you guys about a friend of mine. Uh, it was awesome to get a chance to catch up with him a few days ago. Uh, he's been a, a good man uh, most of the time that I've known him. Or I'd say most of the time. It sounds like he wasn't for some of it. He's been a good man. But something has happened to him. Uh, something's happened to this guy, and it was noticeable. So we sat down. There were three of us at, at, a, at a meeting. We were getting, getting ready to catch up, and... Couple friends, kind of see what's going on, but we had to stop the meeting, the formal part, to say, "Hey, listen, brother, what has happened to you? What is going on with you? Just scoot, get after it, get after it, speed demon." Anyway, uh, what has happened to you, my friend? You are different. Your countenance has changed. You're just like, are you just having a good week, or what's going on? And he said, "I, I can't tell you. Just a burden has been lifted, like this huge." weight that I was carrying around. He said, you know what, if I, if I had to put some, some like words to it, it would sound a little like this. The Holy Spirit's real? My friend has led worship teams his entire life. My friend has built churches. He has been sent on teams to plant new churches. And he said, you know, like we read about him. And we know he's part of the tribe. He's part of God. Part of God's doing something. But like I think up until recently. I was working a good plan. And then I met him. And he's done something inside of me. And I can't go back. Amen. And it was like. Oh man. Whoa. Let me tell you something else. A, a fr pastor friend of ours. Sent us he, he, what his job is. His name's Derek Jackson. What his job is is to kind of cull through all of Christianity's writings, whatever is going on right now, whatever the conversations are out there in academia or in mainstream or whatever it is, to kind of cull through all of the, the multiple writings and find out, you know, what's the Lord really hitting on? And one of the things this week that he sent over was this, this pastor who said, you know, I'm kind of tired of hearing this. And I, I promise this relates to where we're going today. I'm kind of I'm kind of tired of hearing this phrase. How do you know a good church? Are you guys in a good church? Let me just start here. Are you all in a good church? Yeah. Yes, you are. He's gonna say no when the pastor asks him. Yeah. Are you good? Yes, we are, pastor. Anyway. Yes, we are, pastor. We're not in a cult. <laughs> are you in a good church? Yes. Well, emotionally, you say so. Well, what's your defense? What when somebody comes and asks you, what do you love your church? Yeah. Well, we recognize something upon you. What is that? Well, most of the answers this writer was saying is because they're a church that make disciples. Who make disciples? Who make disciples? He said, okay, well, what does that mean when you make disciples that make disciples? Who make disciples? Well, they know the Word. And they put in their time with the Lord. And they, and this pastor was going along. He said, well, I, I, what I noticed was these disciples who make disciples who make disciples... They have this, I don't know if you can see my face, this sour patch, determined, kind of like my friend, state of being, because they're disciples who make disciples who make disciples. He said, what if, and the, the writer proposes a question, what if they're kind of like some of my other friends who are a part of congregations who recognize love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control? What if, what if they recognize the fruit of the Spirit as, as being something that comes out of heaven, something that Jesus disciples into His people as He walks with you according to the power of His Holy Spirit? And when we found out if our bodies were alive, were they smiling? Did they have the joy of the Lord upon their faces? Did they love to get together to celebrate for whatever reason? Because He would be there. Were they lifting high the name of Jesus? Did they have it and say, yeah, yeah? Did they read the word? Of course they did, because it's the living word. They wanted to find it's the, it's the It's the road map for how things work, how the Lord is pleased, how we properly bring him worship, of course. 
Of course they read the Word. But there was a difference amongst them. They weren't talking about disciples who make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. They were talking about what the Lord was doing. Just a thought. I'm here to tell you something, guys. We need, we need God. Amen. Pastor said something obvious. I don't think we realize how much we need Him. We need Him with every fabric of our being. All of us, we need Him. He is the one who authored your life. He is the only one who knows where you're headed. He's the only one who is going to guarantee your happiness, fulfillment, effectiveness. He's the only one who has the keys to this equation. He's the only one who's going to uphold or destroy your lineage. He is the only one. We need him. We need him to be brought, to be brought and positioned in his rightful place in our hearts and in our churches. How do we do that? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Dessert first. Through the power of the Holy Spirit... And through gatherings like this. Not that the pastor, don't let me break any lights. Not that it's a Sunday service. But that all facets of the body are functioning. That the Holy Spirit is amongst us and we can recognize His presence. Did not our hearts burn with inside of us? Did not it leap out in worship whenever the songs that were on His heart were sung by the body in mass at scale? We recognize an agreement together that Jesus is Lord. And He is as good as He says that He is. And we can look upon the young ones and say, my gosh. Or the old ones. My gosh. Look at the character of God established in that man, in that woman. God is truly amongst us. The whole thing, I'm going to go around this way. The whole thing, I'm getting a little too old to be hopping up and down that. I proved that last week or week four. <laughs> Nearly ate it. Dessert first. I know, I know we swing hard and we're, we're, we're in a season where God has been tearing down a false church. <laughs> And there's getting to be lots of awareness of that. And it is proclaimed through the pulpits. But I want us to understand something. We need him more than we ever knew. You're not just floating around living your life. If you want to truly live, you need him. And you need one another. We need specifically the church. A good portion of our discipline... A good portion. If I were to say, his ways aren't our ways, can we understand that? I don't think you, I don't think you know what I say to you. I don't think you understand what I say. Uh -uh. I think a lot of us believe that his ways are our ways. And we, we potentially have the mind of Christ. Well, how would we ever know that we were deceived? How would we ever know that he doesn't think just like Jared does? Because I asked him and he said, listen, have you all ever seen the Homer Simpson where he says, if you want me to eat this donut, say nothing at all, thy will be done. That happens a lot more than we care to admit. How would you ever know that Greg, that God isn't just confirming the thoughts of Greg because Greg hasn't really given him a chance to reply? How would you ever know? You would need a body to come around and go, listen, Elder Greg, we're watching and the testimony of what's coming out, except for whenever you're holding this granddaughter right here. Yes, sir. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That tugs on a heart string. Get her up. I just, it's not the Lord. Come, let's seek the Lord together. Let's get in his presence together and let's see what he says. We need, we need, we need desperately the body. So uh, let me get this opened up to the correct place if I can. We're going to be in Zechariah chapter 1. I'm going to give you a little bit of a lead. Sorry. Our computer was not working this morning as it does not like to pull up the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. It hates them for some reason. We will cast out that demon a little bit later. Next time, let's meet before church, before service. See if we can get that taken care of. What's going on in Zechariah is this. So in Haggai, where we've just been, if, if you haven't been here or you're, you're visiting, we've been studying four books together, basically. What we're looking at 
is Ezra, Nehemiah, Haggai, and Zechariah. And we're basically, we're in Haggai and Zechariah, but those are supplementary books, uh, Ezra and Nehemiah, to kind of get the history of what's going on. So what God has done in Haggai is he said, you're building your own houses and stuff, and I've called you out of exile. I want my house built so there can be worship there. I want, to, I want to be worshipped. This is why you exist. You are my people. Because God, again, wanted to take a people and fill them with his glory. He wanted to be the God who dwells amongst his people so that all the world can look upon them and go, my gosh, their lives are so extravagant. Their love is so immense. Well, who are they following that makes them look like this? There must be a God in heaven, the one whom they bend their knee to. And he also promised this. That if they do not honor his commandments and his ways and his voice, then he will make an example out of them. For he is a God who dwells amongst his people. And the nations of this world will look upon his people and go, nobody wants to be like that. Nobody wants to be disciplined to the level that they've been disciplined. No, I mean, there has got to be a God in heaven because you don't want to be that people. And what you're seeing is God has just come through a season of discipline for 70 years. He told them ahead of time, honor the Sabbath, honor me above all else. If you keep my commandments and my statutes, it will go well with you to thousands of generations. If you do not, I will make an example. And so they're coming out of 70 years of exile with Haggai. And in Zechariah, where we are today, Zechariah is going to say this thing. This is truly to the heart of who God is. I want to deal with your heart. Old covenant, new covenant. Old Testament, new Testament. God has not changed. Amen. He still wants to be worshipped. If I could boil it down even further than that. I could say it in, in proper church terms that we've all learned throughout our life. He wants to be worshipped and magnified and the only way that God can do it. He's looking for friends, and I don't know why. He made you. You are dirt. You are lower than the angels. You're not even, you're not even to the wow and splendor of the angels. I mean, when we see angels in, in, the, in the book, when John, whoever it is, comes across an angel, they are sucking dirt because they're kind of mistaking them for divinity. It might be God. I don't know. It's, just, it's, it's more than I am. We're made lower than that. But God has chosen to, to have a relationship with us and crown us with more glory. And it upends the whole thing, and it's kind of how God likes to work. He wants a friend. He wants an intimate heart connection. He wants you to want to worship Him. He doesn't want robots. He's given you the opportunity Just worship me. And that's where Zechariah is going to come in. And we're going to figure out that he's been saying the same thing over and over and over again. In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, don't get confused with the words here. Specific day, specific month. What I want you to get out of that real quick. On the day called today. We don't know what the future holds. But he could say, uh, date please. 12. Okay. 12, December 11th, right, thank you. On the 11th day, in the month of December, the word of the Lord came to Grace Fellowship Church. We don't know. This isn't over. This whole thing isn't over yet. Just to their time, they're reading back and going, oh my goodness, this is what happened with Moses. This is what's going on with our people. And they're waiting. They've been sent into exile. And all of a sudden, this ragtag group of people who nobody recognized really comes out of Darius's reign. And they've gathered together, what, 50,000 or so. And the word of the Lord came to Zechariah. And he goes, as, as good Jewish writers do, and they recognize the lineage. Because this stuff, this faith is passed on from generation to generation. The word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, son of Yoda. They've renamed him this week. It's either Ido or Ido. Yoda works, if you want to remember it. saying, the Lord was very angry with your fathers. 
Not our Jesus. Not the Father God. He wouldn't be angry. The Lord was very angry with your fathers. Therefore, say to them, thus says the Lord of hosts, return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Before we go on, bend the knee of your heart in that moment for a good and gracious God. He never has to restore them. But it is in who he is. It is in what he's already promised and said. Listen in your hearts right now. He does not have to restore you. You have broken your covenant. You have sinned against an almighty God. Thank. Thanks be to him. Be unto him who is worthy and guarantees this covenant, this relationship with us. He is the guarantor of this covenant, which means we screwed up, but through the blood, his promise, his guarantee of Jesus, we are restored to relationship. All we need but do is repent. It's already there. Where are we going to find such a thing? The voice of the Lord in community. Through the power of his Holy Spirit. Do not sake, you can see why they're so adamant about it. Do not sake the gathering together of the believers. It is for your good. The Lord was very angry with your fathers. Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord of hosts, return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Do not be like your fathers, to whom the former prophets cried out. Thus says the Lord of hosts, return from your evil ways. And from your evil deeds. But they did not hear or pay attention to me, declares the Lord. Your fathers. Where are they? What he's saying. Where's the witness? Well, they've already died. Whether in exile or in the judgment, I guaranteed my word. And not only that, I'm still guaranteeing it past their own existence. You imagine that, that God is still good past your existence. God is still disciplining past your existence. We, we've lived in generations where the whole thing closes up. Well, the Lord better come back soon. Because why? Because you're getting old? What about the next generation, you narcissistic people? God is still good. He is still good. He is infinitely good. And his promises, his word endures forever. The guarantee of his character makes it so. Do not be like your fathers, to whom the former prophets cried out, thus says the Lord of hosts, return from your evil ways and from your evil deeds, but they did not hear or pay attention to me, declares the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, his anointed ones who sent these things, and where are they? So where are the unrighteous who turn their back? They've died and been hauled off in rebellion. Where are the prophets? My holy ones who delivered. Oh, they, they died and went away. Where is his word? But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophet, did they not overtake your fathers? I'll pause right there. there. There's a phrase in there. I'm, I'm sure I think this is NLT. This is NLT behind me, so it'll be a little off in my translation. I apologize. Uh, there was a phrase in there that said, overtake. Did not my words overtake? Did not my words outlast? Did not my words, my words guarantee? And I was thinking, what's he talking about? If you would, uh, Casey, uh, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're going to read the whole thing. I'm just kidding. There's 65, chapter, or 65 verses. It's really long. I, I'm tempted. I go back and forth. Part of me thinks... Part of me thinks we should. Oh, come on. Are you going to beat me there, Casey? And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord... 
I have a friend this week. We were getting together. He is notorious. Different friend. Okay. Not the same cat. Different friend. He is notorious. He's a lover of Jesus, full of the Spirit, running headlong into whatever God wants for him. But he is notorious for kind of one-track-minded thinking. He wants to pack stadiums. God's worthy of it. He's going to make it happen. And it's a, it's a noble thing. But sometimes it's like, isn't that a little bit? Like, is that what the Lord's into right now? Because it kind of seems like he's disciplining his church. And we've cautioned him over the last couple of years, especially after COVID and whatnot. It's like, hey, I think the Lord's dealing with this church. I'm not really sure he wants to pack stadiums right now. Nah, brother, nah, brother. About packing stadiums. Glory to God. Glory to God. Packing stadiums. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I had, a, I had a great opportunity to meet with him this week, and he said, I've been dealt with. <laughs> Tell you something. The discipline of the Lord is a wonderful thing. The full counsel of God found in the body, his body. He says, let me tell you something, brother. I've been disciplined, and here's my new goal. He's known for leaving you behind because he's going. My new goal is to get as slow and low as possible. So that I do not miss the voice of the Lord. And as soon as he said it, something pinged in my spirit, man. That's it. That is it. If we can get as low and as slow. Here's the problem. Uh, some of you boomers, you're not going to understand this, okay? I, and I use that term lovingly. There is a, in the younger crew, and you might have had it when you were younger. There is a fear of missing out. They call it FOMO. Fear of missing out on the next movement of God. Fear of missing out on the next thing. Fear of missing out on the things that God's called you to do. Fear of missing out on making your millions or lo losing this chance on, on money or opportunity or whatever it is. There's this thing called FOMO. And the voice of the Lord and the ways of the Lord are antithetical to that. Go, 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 quick, quick, quick. Got to take it to maximize. Got to do as much as we can right now. But with the Lord, we wait. Be still and know that I am God. Wait patiently upon the Lord. We wait for this voice to come. And so I was, I was prodding a bit with my friend to see if he had any FOMO in there. Just to see if the Lord has completed his work. But don't you think you might miss out on a couple of... What happens if you're not in position so that you can be leading the next great move of God? Just thought I'd check. He said, where's the best place? Why would I be worried about where I need to position myself? I know my position. Speak the Lord. Your servant listens. Today. Tomorrow. And he said, when he speaks, I'm right where I need to be. If there is a yes in my heart, if I have the ability and the freedom to say yes to what he's asking, I'm right in step. I'm right in step with the Lord. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all of his commandments that I commanded you today. The Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All the blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Remember what he was saying earlier? I was like, that phrase, what is that phrase? I don't think that means what you think that means. What, what, is, what is that phrase, overtake? And all the blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. The guarantor of the covenant, the one who outlives all of us, the one who will continue to be good long after we're gone, will make sure that the blessings overtake us in abundance and our lineage and beyond. Overtake you. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Remember the one thing that my friend said? This is the only place we need to be in. Do you want blessing? honor to walk in the way that God has designed you to walk, 
to realize your full created potential in Christ. To, I mean, to even some of you on the other side, that, that's carrot. Stick. To obey the commandments of the living God. To make sure that you don't miss a thing. It's in one place. Speak Lord. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb. And the fruit of the ground. And the fruit of your cattle. Please don't miss this because it's everything. Don't relegate it to the Old Testament either because the, the opposite is true. Yeah. <laughs> you want to see the pastor get nervous? Have the baby pull on that, the end of that camera leg. <laughs> hey, is this thing on? <laughs> Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, the fruit of the ground, the fruit of your cattle, increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your baskets and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall be you when you come in and blessed shall be you when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies to rise up against you and be defeated before you. They shall come out against you in one way and they shall flee before you in seven. The Lord will command the blessing on you and your barns and upon all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself. As he has sworn to you, if you keep his commandments, the commandments of the Lord, and walk in his ways, and all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you, and the Lord will make you abound in prosperity, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of the livestock, and in the fruit of the ground, within the land that the Lord swore to your fr the fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens. He will open up the heavens. To give the rain to your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall never have to borrow. And you shall, oh, and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall go up and not down if you obey the commands of the Lord your God, which I command you today. Being careful to do them. And if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command you today, to the right hand or to the left, to go, to go after other gods or to serve them. That is 1 through 14, all God's people said, amen. amen. That is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. But, uh, anybody want to know what chapter 15 through 65 says? 15 through 65. 15 through 65. The first part, can we, can we agree, is the promise of God. That is who God is in his nature. He wants to bless and not curse. He wants to leave so much abundance upon his people that the world looks upon him and goes, My God, what is going on? What is happening to you people? In the same way, in verses 15 through 65, it's a few verses here, as his people, you will be disciplined if you do not. Okay? And Felix already knows the end. And that's a great thing! <laughs> that's autocorrective, baby! We do not want to be there! But he's got to say it because his promises outlive even our own character. Like, it's, it's amazing. He's amazing. We have to say it so that when it happens, when God judges his church, even we go, yep, yeah, because he's good. And that's why we all had it coming. Amen. My word, I don't know how many years we spent there going, and y'all remember this. What is wrong? What is wrong? What is going on? Thanks be to God that he stepped in and said, this is not that. I want friends. I want people that I can pour my spirit into and they will lavish back upon me. I want people with intimacy and relationship. I don't want people looking for fame, hungry for money, looking to sleep with the congregation. Good night. I want lovers of souls. I want a people worthy of my name and my goodness will outlast them. I will have it, says the Lord. Woo, okay. 
15 on. I'm going to give you a sampling. I have to. It's in his word. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, or be careful to do all of his commandments and his statutes that I command you today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Curses shall be in your city. And cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall you be in your basket and kneading bowl. Cursed shall the fruit of your womb and the, and the fruit of the ground, the increase of your herd, the young of your flock. Cursed shall you be when you come in. Cursed shall you be when you go out. And it continues on and on and on and on. We were reading in Haggai the last couple of weeks, and there was that sense. Remember where it's like it felt like you put money in your pocket and there's holes in your pocket? And all of us were like, wait a minute, wait a minute. We, we relate to that. Like, I'm working really hard, and there's not enough at the end. And God says, as a promise, when you're under my blessing, it functions like this. You will always have enough. You may have nothing, but it will be abundant unto you. Your shoes, remember when they were in the desert? Your shoes will not run out. Your food will never cease. I will always make sure that you have enough, and you will be grateful in your hearts. When you're under the curse, it ain't ever enough. There's a hole in that pocket. The boss is on me all the time. Nothing that I do is ever enough. There's no revenue. My wife. My wife. No, I, baby. I love you. But my wife. No one. Not this one. But the one. She's got one eye. Things when she looks at you. There's no refuge. You know what it's like to be under the curse. I say that in tongue in cheek. But like, come on. We know what it's like. We're called to live under the blessing of Jesus. And even Jesus says in John chapter 14, you know what, I could probably have uh, Jim quote it as fast as it takes to turn over there. <laughs> Honestly, this computer stuff. John chapter 14, verses uh, 15. That's probably not right. Jesus says, red letters, verses uh, I'm sorry, brother. I'm going to start up a little earlier. If you love me, John chapter 14, verse 15 through 20, we'll call it. Busy. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Wow. Red letter, New Testament, New Covenant. God talking to his people. Remember... He outlasts. His words and his promises, his decrees overtake us. So whether you choose to abide by them or not, he will prove to be faithful. Let's see, just a little, little snippet. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. He's going to open up a new <laughs> level, a spiritual level. We talked before about your, your money running out, your bread. What about spiritually speaking? And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. You want to talk about a bountiful harvest of blessing. There is a third person of the Trinity who dwells inside of every believer. Who grants us knowledge and inspiration, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. And I'm missing one more, but it's in there. He's in there. And he manifests those characteristics. It's who he is. It's him coming out. All of a sudden, we have more than we ever needed because it's him. How do we tackle this situation? I don't know. We wait. What are the commands of God? Whatever he says. My friend... We're sitting down to dinner, lunch. We're at a Mexican restaurant. Woo! Woo! I know, but yeah. we only eat. I'm sorry, that's redundant. We only eat Mexican food, really. Okay? <laughs> so we were at a restaurant, one of ours, you know. And I said, man, where on street is you're running. You're like up in the mornings running at the park. Why? 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 And he says, well... The Lord said, get healthy. Okay, fair enough. And he says, well, you do understand that the last time he told me to get healthy, I did not. I said, 
I was gonna say, what, what, what happened? What happened the last time? The gallbladder? I had gallbladder stones. <laughs> oh. Well, God would never know. Even the spirit of truth, I will receive, I will, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. But a little while the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You also will live. And that day you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. Talk about connection right there in the family. People will be able to recognize. Remember the world looking upon? When they look at Jana, they're going to see, my God, he must be. Because she should be discouraged. She should be beaten down. This job is so, I mean, Jana, your job. Seriously. You can compartmentalize for so long until all those boogers hop out of the basement. Sooner or later, it has to be dealt with by a holy God. And people look upon it and go, how do you have the peace that you have? Miss Joyce, why are you here? <laughs> the last report I had was you were, I mean, you were headed into the hospital and we needed to pray for Miss Joyce, what swells up into your being and says, I must be amongst God's people and give him praise, glory, and honor. It's him. Now, my word. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Amen. You want to talk about a promise from the guarantor of the covenant? If you... We lost something. If you... Will follow my commandments. If you will obey my commandments, you will listen to my voice. If you will love me, my Father will love you, and I will love you, and we will make our home in you, and I will manifest myself to you. Listen now, some people, that's real. That, not like, oh, that's real. Like, that means really they saw him manifested in prison cells. Really, really. Some people, that means, I've, I've heard people driving down the road and Jesus is in, they're about to be in an accident or something like that. And Jesus manifests himself in the passenger seat. Like really real. Sometimes that's walking on your ag road and going, God, I don't know what the answer to this problem is. And you look up into the distance and he drops the truth nugget into your soul. And you know that the God of all the universe has addressed not just that problem, but all the ones prior with what he said. Amen. Never mind. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen? Amen. We want this. We have this. It is what he's guaranteed over us. I need to tell you a couple things real quick. God will offend you. His ways are not our ways. You come into this body today and every week because he's going to push on something. We are human and we need to be like part of that being transformed by the renewal of our mind. Yes, but sometimes people get to come over and do a little iron sharpening iron. OK, that's what church leadership is all about. Trust me, they do not want to say the harsh things that God is asking them to say. They're not harsh, but the hard things that we don't want to look at. And they come right in, twinkle toe it in, because they've seen something. They've heard from the Lord. And they need to talk to you about this one issue. Guess what the one issue is that you don't want to talk about? The thing that you're trying to keep hidden deep, deep down, or the thing that you didn't even know about that causes a visceral reaction to go, I don't like you. Well, maybe you're right. God has a way. He's going to do it today until he's finished. It's who he is. So the good news is I get to give you as an exhorter the thing that I give you every week. Choose you this day whom you will serve. But I already know that he's made an offer to a generation and to a people that are going to say yes. And that is the blessing of the Lord. So today I get to say, follow God. Love him well. That's all he wants is a friend. He wants someone he can trust with his presence. 
You do not have to be perfect. You just have to be willing to receive him on his terms. He will shape you. He will direct you. He will knock off all of the tough pieces. He will do the heavy lifting. It will take everything. Say yes. And I know that I'm speaking to a people whose hearts can go. Yeah. And on the 11th day of December, the word of the Lord can come into the hearts of the people. And we can be forever changed. Amen. 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 Father, we love you. And we take this moment right here and now. We've heard the word of the Lord taught and spoken. But this is the part, Holy Spirit, that only you can do. You have cultivated things in people's hearts today. You have brought up moments that I wasn't even preaching to. But that you were speaking to. You touched those moments. You touched sin that needs to come out. You touched you touched disease. You touched, you touched different things today, Lord. We give you this time, Holy Spirit. Speaking to your people. We know that this has been a promise. Old covenant and new. Guaranteed to your people. By you. See a boxer in a ring, shadow boxing, round and round and round and round and round and round. I don't know whether he thinks he's training or whether he thinks he's actually boxing someone. But the Lord wants you to lay down your gloves. Mm -hmm. Lay down your gloves, and it's almost like a fisherman situation whenever he called the, the guys who were fishing. Lay down your nets. Come and follow me. Lay down your gloves. Lay down the way that you understand of how this fight works. Lay it down and follow Jesus. Father, we honor, we honor you. Thank you that you chose us and we know that you're doing it around the world. We know that you are speaking to your body and this is who you always have been and who you always will be. But in this moment, this special, special time where you have spoken to your people, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. You are incredible. We want to lift your name high on this earth. So we pray for the children of this community, God, who seem to be under attack day after day. So we pray your sovereign hand of protection over them. God, we pray for clarity of mind and thought. And we pray that any weapon formed against them uh, to come after their sexuality, their identities, anything would, would not prosper. We pray that you would stand with your righteousness as guard set over uh, the children of this community. God, we pray that you would rally folks around uh, that would stand for truth, that would hear your voice. God, may our leadership continue to be built, uh, not just the church, but in the, in the community, but be built around hearing the voice of the Lord, honoring your commandments, walking in the power of the Spirit, and seeing incredible things done. We pray that over our city. We pray that over our families right now, in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. 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 We love you, Lord. Mingle.